Namo Buddhaya. Welcome back to Monks in the Morning from Colombo Dhamma Friends of Mahameonawa. The monks here are so happy to get to spend time with you now. You know, one of the things the Supreme Buddha is very clear about is that we have to work hard if we want to improve our situation in life. If we want to be happy, this isn't something we can just get by wishing for. We have to do the things with our body, speech, and mind that cause happiness. But once we begin to work hard like this, then the benefits start flowing into our lives like a great river. Have you ever seen a big, strong river? It keeps flowing, doesn't it? It doesn't just suddenly stop and take a rest. And if it's a big river, it never runs out of water. Well, the Supreme Buddha said that if we want goodness to continuously flow into our lives, there are things we can develop so we keep accumulating good merit all day long, night and day. And that's what we're going to learn about in the sermon today. We'll also recite the Mahakasapatera Bodjanga Paritta. So get your chanting book ready. Or if you don't have a copy of the Mahamewanawa Pali English Chanting Book, then you can click on the show notes link to read along online or download a copy. But now, let's start by taking the refuges and the precepts. Place your hands together and think about the Supreme Buddha, the Supreme Dhamma, and the Supreme Sangha while you chant along with us. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Namo tasse bhagavato arehato samma sambuddhase Namo tasse bhagavato arehato Samma Sambuddhase Namo Tasse Bhagavato Arehato Samma Sambuddhase Buddhang Saranang Gachami Dhammang Saranang Gachami Sanghang saranang gachami Dutiyampi buddhang saranang gachami Dutiyampi dhammang saranang gachami Dutiyampi sanghang saranang gachami Tatiyampi buddhang saranang gachami Tatiyampi dhammang saranang gachami Tatiyampi sanghang saranang gachami Sadhu, sadhu Sadhu. Say after me, I observe the precept of abstaining from killing beings. I observe the precept of abstaining from stealing. I observe the precept of abstaining from sexual misconduct. I observe the precept of abstaining from telling lies. I observe the precept of abstaining from taking intoxicating drinks and drugs. 
with the refuge of the noble triple gem i observe these precepts for happiness in this life for rebirth in heaven to escape from the sufferings of sansara may it help me may it be a blessing sadhu 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 namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhassa homage to the blessed one the worthy one the supremely enlightened one sadhu 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 namo buddhaye dear meritorious children today we are going to learn a sutta from the sangyutta nikaya from the section sangyutta nikaya and the name of the sutta is punya bisand sutta the name of the sutta is punya bisand sutta punya bisand means overflowing river of merit it's a river or of merit always flowing so This discourse was taught in Savatthi at the Jetavana Monastery which was built by the wealthy businessman Anatha Pindika. Dear children, our Supreme Buddha addressed the monks saying, Chattaro me bhikave punyabhisandha, kusalabhisandha. Monks, there are four kinds of overflowing rivers of merit that lead to happiness and well-being. since we are all desire to live comfortably and happily let us closely listen to our supreme buddha's wise words to learn what we should do for these wonderful rivers of merit will flow into our lives as well imagine there's a huge a river that flows water very fast now imagine the great rivers you have seen before and think just like what is always flowing in a huge river merit will always flow to your life even when you are at school even while uh, playing with your friends could be while traveling in a vehicle or could be while sleeping even yet there are ways to gain merit children there are some merit like planting trees making bridges making ponds building roads will give you merit day and night so as human beings especially the ones who are living a lay life they should gain they should protect their life by doing merit in many ways because lay people's lives are very busy so if you can do special merit in a way that you can gain merit like a huge river that is always flowing rivers of merit then you don't have to worry children you can live happily even the adults what are the four rivers the first is firmly rooted and unshakable confidence in the supreme buddha in pali it is called avicca prasad avicca prasad Dear children there are people who practice faith and generosity for some time but after a while they give up at times they show faith and confidence in the buddha but at times they do not if someone speaks in favor of the dhamma they too join and show that they have a strong faith in the buddha but at a different time when the same person is with another group of people who are not in favor of the dhamma 
this person too may show lack of faith and would side with the others does not happen to us children with the dharma school children a different life with the kids in the school a different life no no our life should not change remember our virtuous life should be virtuous always with anyone you associate such people are the ones who changes their life according to the people they meet such people are not consistent in their faith confidence in the buddha that is not deep rooted unshakable faith or confidence buddha says children the buddha says these people are like tattered dried leaves of banana tree you know tattered dried leaves of banana trees hanging down along the trunk and swaying in the wind these leaves always sway in the direction of the wind the buddha explains that the faith of some people is like that that means not strong like a dried leaf of a banana tree can shake and swing as the wind blows our confidence in the buddha shouldn't change from time to time it should be maintained firmly in a proper way now dear children but to develop our mind to a great extent buddha has given a great simile our buddha has compared deeply rooted faith to a tall stone column buried deep in the ground called an indrakila you call it an indrakila these columns were a common sight in india during our buddha's time they were usually used as watch towers and very solid and rooted deep in the ground and therefore did not sway even during extremely strong winds our supreme buddha also mentions the indrakila in the ratna sutta as a firm stone post that cannot be shaken by winds blowing from all four directions similarly the person with unshakable deep rooted confidence in the buddha will have no doubts about the confidence they have placed in the buddha so dear children even your faith in the buddha dhamma and the maha sangha should be like this stone column like this strong pillar that is unshakable at all times this firmly rooted confidence cannot be changed by anyone in this world therefore we should all gradually develop our faith to this level then our confidence in the supreme buddha will be called punya abhisandha the overflowing river of merit this continuous flow of merit will help us live a happy and comfortable life this is the first river of merit flowing into your life children our supreme buddha has most compassionately taught us how we can develop our confidence in the buddha it is by chanting the verse iti piso bhagava arahang samma sambuddho vidya charna sampanno sugato loka vidu anuttaro purisa dhamma sarthi satta deva manussanam buddho bhagavati they are the nine noble qualities of our supreme buddha mentioned in this verse dear children if we develop deep rooted confidence about these noble qualities in our minds as a result a river of merit will continuously flow into our lives nourishing it with happiness and comfort our supreme buddha became the first arahant in the world about 2600 years ago and this was known as the samma sambuddha the supreme enlightened one dear children you may have noticed that while reciting the nine noble qualities we say arahang first and not samma sambuddha what is the meaning of the word arahang who is an arahant our buddha is an arahant an arahant is someone who has fully eradicated or cleansed their mind of all impurities and defilements therefore that person is truly and fully awakened and is called an arahant that mind is not affected by lust and delusion let's learn what these defilements are defilements are the negative thoughts that occur in our minds and make the mind impure dull and dirty 
at any time if our mind becomes dirty it is either by lust hatred or delusion in pali we say rag desh moha rag dosh moha these three together give rise to all other defilements that occur in our minds if our minds become impure with these defilements our speech and bodily actions will also become impure in this world if someone says a bad word it is when their mind has become defiled with impurities if one were to act in a bad manner that's when their mind is impure if one were to think bad thoughts that's when impurities have entered their mind the person who has eradicated all these defilements is an arahant so today we learn little bit how to gain merit continuously for our life so let's keep on learning ways to gain merit to our life continuously throughout this upcoming programs and realize the four noble truths and develop an unshakable confidence in the supreme buddha may that unshakable confidence help us to realize the four noble truths in this gautama buddha's dispensation sadhu 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 namo buddhaya parit chanting maha kasapatera bodjanga parit Turn to page 42 in your chanting book. In this sutta, the Supreme Buddha recites the seven factors of enlightenment, the Bodhanga, to the Arahant Mahakasapa when he was very sick. Do you remember the seven factors of enlightenment? Count them off with me. Mindfulness, investigation of Dhamma, effort, rapture, that's a happiness in our minds and in our bodies, calm concentration and equanimity you know this dhamma teaching was so powerful that just by listening the arahant mahakasapa immediately recovered from his illness once even the supreme buddha recovered from an illness by hearing the arahant mahachunda recite them to him of course the buddha and mahakasapa both knew these factors very well of course they were already enlightened but still the power of this true dhamma helped overcome their illness it's a great paritta chant when anyone is sick today we'll chant the entire sutta in english so we learn and understand the meaning sadhu 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 thus have i heard On one occasion the blessed one was living in the city of Rajagaha at the bamboo grove in the squirrel's feeding ground at that time the venerable mahakasapa who was living in the pipali cave was afflicted with the disease was suffering physically and was gravely ill then the blessed one arising from his meditation in the evening visited the venerable mahakasapa and sat down on the seat made ready for him the seated the blessed one spoke to the venerable mahakasapa well kasapa how is it with you are you bearing up Are you enduring your bodily suffering? Do your pains decrease or increase? Are there signs of your pains decreasing and not increasing? No bhante I am not bearing up 
I am not enduring and the pain is very great. There is a sign not of pains decreasing, but increasing. These seven factors of enlightenment kasapa are well expounded, cultivated and fully developed by me. They lead to special knowledge, to realization of the noble truths and to Nibbana. What are the seven? Mindfulness, the factor of enlightenment, Kasipa, is well expounded, cultivated, and fully developed by me. It leads to special knowledge, to realization of the noble truths, and to Nibbana, investigation of the Dhamma, the factor of enlightenment Kasipa, is well expounded, cultivated, and fully developed by me. It leads to special knowledge, to realization of the noble truths and to Nibbana. Effort the factor of enlightenment Kasipa is well expounded, cultivated and fully developed by me. It leads to special knowledge to realization of the noble truths and to Nibbana. Rapture the factor of enlightenment Kasipa is well expounded, cultivated and fully developed by me. It leads to special knowledge to realization of the noble truths and to Nibbana. Rapture the factor of enlightenment Kasipa is well expounded, cultivated and fully developed by me. It leads to special knowledge to realization of the noble truths and to Nibbana. Calm the factor of enlightenment Kasipa is well expounded, cultivated and fully developed by me. It leads to special knowledge to realization of the noble truths and to Nibbana. Concentration, the factor of enlightenment, Kasipa, is well expounded, cultivated and fully developed by me. It leads to special knowledge, to realization of the noble truths and to Nibbana. Equanimity, the factor of enlightenment Kasipa, is well expounded, cultivated and fully developed by me. It leads to special knowledge to realization of the noble truths and to Nibbana. The seven factors of enlightenment Kasipa are well expounded, cultivated and fully developed by me. 
They lead to special knowledge, to realization of the noble truths, and to Nibbana. Most surely, O Blessed One, they are the factors of enlightenment. Most surely, O Sublime One, they are the factors of enlightenment. The Blessed One taught this discourse, and the Venerable Mahakasipa, glad at heart, rejoiced in the Blessed One's explanation. Thereupon the Venerable Mahakasipa recovered from that disease, and that disease of the Venerable Mahakasipa disappeared instantly. Etin sachin suvati hotu By this truth may there be well be Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu It was great to spend time with you again today. We hope that you learned something new, and we really hope that you can use what you learned as you go about the rest of your day. Do you remember the Pali word we learned for unshakable confidence? Avecha pasada. Once we have this unshakable confidence in the Supreme Buddha, then the merit, the goodness that flows into our lives is continuous, without stopping. So, now let's share merit. Today, by body, speech, and mind, we've collected great, powerful, wholesome kamma into our lives. And when we do this, we like for others to rejoice. So may all of our teachers, our friends, our relatives have a happy mind thinking about all of this merit. And may they soon experience for themselves the supreme bliss of Nibbana in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Sad, sad, sad. Namo Buddhaya.